ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that can cause us to struggle with focus, motivation, sustained attention, organization, and there's many more, but those are just to name a few. And in my opinion, it's not a mental illness. Our brain just works differently because it's lacking dopamine and dopamine transporters, meaning that it's harder for us to feel rewarded or good because our dopamine can't get to where it needs to in the brain. And dopamine is one of our feel-good neurotransmitters that helps us feel motivated, rewarded, and hold attention when needed. Because we don't have enough dopamine and what we have isn't getting to where it needs to go, we continuously look out into our environment for things that make us feel good, which can make focusing on more mundane tasks difficult, even painful really. Since ADHD is often misunderstood and sometimes stigmatized, Today, I wanna to offer up six things you may not know are related to it. If you're new here, welcome to the community. My name is Katie Morton. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I talk about anxiety, depression, eating disorders, and really anything mental health related. So if you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you. I promise you will always leave with some helpful information for you or for someone that you love. Okay, let's jump into those six things that we didn't know were ADHD related. And number one is taking risks even when unnecessary. This is because adrenaline can feel really good and those of us with ADHD thrive on it. It's the reason we can feel like we perform best under pressure. Because of the risk involved and high pressure environment, it makes it easier and more rewarding for our brain to focus on something, which is why many of us with ADHD can find ourselves in jobs like working in an ER, in entertainment, or in tech. The pressure helps us focus and feel alive. And this could also be connected to us doing impulsive things that can cause us or those we love unnecessary pain. I've heard from members of our community that they've made impulsive financial decisions like poor investments or even quitting their jobs on a whim because it sounded exciting only to realize maybe it wasn't the best decision after all. Remember, those of us with ADHD can struggle with organization and paying close attention to details, which makes us more susceptible to these types of impulsive decisions. Number two, being forgetful. Again, because we are constantly looking out into our environment for things that are interesting or exciting to us, we can not listen when we're spoken to, get sidetracked while doing something and forget to come back to it, or even lose things that we need to complete a task. This is all because it's hard for us to focus and log something away into our memory to do later. We can get pulled into something more enjoyable and forget what we were doing or that we were supposed to be doing something before that. This can be tricky when it comes to work or school and in our relationships because people can view it as us being selfish or not caring about them or not being reliable when it's really that our brain just doesn't like to focus on things that aren't new or exciting. Number three, talking quickly and over other people all the time. Hopefully you're starting to see how these are all linked because again, when someone is talking about something that we don't find interesting, which if we're all being honest, this happens a lot in life, right? But instead of being able to just listen and wait to change the subject to something else more exciting, those of us with ADHD we can talk over them, push the conversation into something we enjoy, and then be so excited about it that we just talk really quickly about the subject. And because we're more impulsive, we can struggle to wait our turn. Because in our mind, they're just taking too long, you know? And by jumping in and talking over them, we're really just trying to stay engaged in the conversation. That's another thing that's important for everyone to understand. People with ADHD aren't doing these things to be rude or hurtful. They're doing it so that they can keep engaging with us and enjoy themselves too. It's almost like a majority of our ADHD symptoms are just ways that we try to cope with our lack of enjoyment and reward from everyday tasks. And number four, it's difficult to go to bed at a reasonable time. Now this can happen for a few reasons. The first is that we may struggle to even realize what time it is because we're jumping from thing to thing, maybe show to show, searching for that dopamine hit. And time can just slip by without us even noticing. And second, we may feel like the nighttime is the only time where we get to actually do the things we want to. Because that feels damn good, we lack the impulse control to not watch that next episode or play that next level. So before you know it, it's, you know, after midnight or maybe three in the morning, and we've stayed up way later than we planned. Number five, picking fights with others because we're bored. 
Again, this is an unconscious way of getting our needs met. Those of us with ADHD can like to be around drama or even create drama as a way of stimulating a release of adrenaline, which in turn stimulates our frontal lobe. And our frontal lobe is where we organize our thoughts and spaces. We plan things in advance and accomplish goals. By picking fights and creating tension, we're trying to, without realizing it, to create a pressurized situation so that we can function better. And this is obviously why not understanding and managing our ADHD can have an adverse effect on our relationships. Sixth and finally, having trouble making decisions, unless they're done impulsively. Like we talked about earlier, our brains work differently when we have ADHD. We don't have enough dopamine or dopamine transporters. And also our prefrontal cortex may not be able to function at full capacity. Meaning that considering all options and making a thoughtful decision isn't going to be our strong suit. Not only is that level of focus going to be hard for us, but we may struggle to even think through all the details and find that we can't make a decision unless there's a time crunch or pressure that's put on us. So what can we do? Well, instead of always fighting against our brains and trying to force another way of thinking and working, let's work with our brains. We know that ADHD brains can focus more when things are new, interesting to us. There's a sense of urgency and the thing that we're doing is challenging. So when figuring out our one goal, yes, one at a time, I know you may feel the urge to pile others on and I have a trick for that that I'll share in a second, but pick one goal, write it down. Then take a minute to consider if there are new things that we could learn or do on our way to this goal. Also, what will the cost be for us if we don't meet that goal? And is there a deadline? Write these things down so that you can see them and they can help keep us motivated when maybe we're struggling to start or to keep going. And as for my tip for having too many goals, take a notebook, pick one page, okay? Fold it in half vertically. And on the side that you can see when it's folded up, put that one goal and the motivating things that we just talked about. On the side that you fold it under, right? You can't see it when it's folded up, unfold it, write down all those other goals that have come flying into your head that you would like to achieve at some point and then fold it back under. When you check off the one goal that you can see now, then I give you full permission to unfold that page and pick one more to move it to that other side. Does that make sense? I hope so. And my final tip is to take some time to consider why you have this goal. Is this something you have set yourself or something someone else told you you should do? Are we doing it because it sounds fun or maybe it's just important to us? This will help us make sure we have enough motivation or motivators, like I could lose my job or I could fail a class, to sustain us while we work to get there. Oh, and my good friend Jessica has a channel called How to ADHD that I cannot recommend enough. So go and check her out. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.